This unit, we're experimenting with pen textures, showing shading using a pen. And we did four different examples. These are all about two inches or so. I just used a ruler to trace each square. But what I want you to demonstrate is going from dark to light using that pattern. So for the first one is hatching, it's just straight lines. I would put across a coat of lines similar to this one. So the lines are kind of spaced out. Remember, when you're making your lines, if they're closer together, they're gonna to look darker. If they're further apart, then they look lighter. So I put a coat of light lines all the way across, and then I gradually get darker. I would not start at the super dark, making them super dark right away without putting those others on there. And as you look at all these, if you kind of squint your eyes while you're working, it'll give you an idea if you are doing a gradual shade or if it goes from really dark to really light fast, because that's not what we're after. We're after a gradual change. Cross hatching is going to be similar to the hatching, only you're adding lines in the opposite direction. I find for most people, that's kind of what they uh, gravitate towards if they haven't really studied any uh, pen ink. This is one that I use a lot too. Same type of thing, lines spaced out one direction and the other, and then gradually add in the darker. Scribbling or scumbling, similar to what we did with the doodling pages, adding little tiny um, scribble marks across here and then gradually adding them till they get thicker. That one goes pretty quick. The stippling goes pretty slow. This is adding dots. When you add these dots, I would add it in a um, domino five pattern. So two and then one so that you don't end up with a straight line. And it takes a really long time to get them really dark because you want to place them. You don't want to do it really quickly because if you do it quickly, you get the little, it almost looks like a comma instead of a dot. Um, so, and try to keep them next to each other instead of piled on top of each other. So this, we did spend a lot of time doing just this one. We had different um, pens this time, so we experimented with the other one quick also. So if you had two different pens, you could try another one um, in this area. And then the second day, we experimented with drawing different geometrical shapes. So we started with cylinders. Thing to remember with cylinders is it, it's gonna be a squished oval or a football shape. And the lines to the side are parallel. So I have a bottom curve here, this curve, and this curve will be the same. And then the, you have your top curve. So trying to keep those the same, the sides are parallel. Unless you're trying to draw like a coffee mug or something like that, they're gonna come in a little bit, obviously but keeping those kind of the same, and then using some type of shade. So for this part of the project, for all of the shapes, I'm having you draw at least five, if not more, and shading at least one in each one, if not more. For the cubes, to remember is your top and bottom are kind of squished together, and the outsides are elongated to make it look like you're seeing it from the side and not directly above. These lines will be all the same length so that this angle and this angle are at the same um, angle. You can do different sizes, but you're shading at least one of them. For this, kind of we there's different ways to do it, but what we use as a guide is one side is really dark, the other side's a medium, the other side's a light, and this way is your shadow. For the previous one, we did one side is darker and then your shadows over here to light. If you're shading the inside of a cylinder, kind of keep that in mind that it's also curved if you're using a line pattern. Next one we did was cones. The bottom curve is the same as a cylinder. The top is just gonna be a triangle. So we use guide points and then the center. And then shading, remember, this is gonna go out like a fan. And these lines will curve. Same with the cylinder. Your shading lines will curve to show that it's still a rounded object. And then we did flags. For the flag, if you've never done one before, there's different ways to do it. This is how we're going to do them. Um, you're going to do an elongated like line that goes back and forth, kind of fan folding. But you don't want it super um, tall. You want it long. So we just went in a back and forth pattern like this. Then next you'll add the bottom line. So anything that has a straight line or a curve gets a line. 
those are all be about the same length it's because as it comes down the ribbon will actually it could get thicker but it won't get thinner and then for the last step you'll add the bottom line this line and this line will be parallel so if it curves at all that line will too and then you add your back lines in as well we're going to spend a little bit more time the next time adding a few more on there and we'll talk a little bit more about shading because we didn't get there but um, to make this look curved, just like we did with the cylinder, the outside will get some shade on there. You could even do some really dark in the back. If you were working in color, like color pencil or something like that, maybe the back side's a different color or a darker shade. Like if you had the front was a light blue, maybe the dark is like a, or back is like a dark blue. You could do something like that as well. And if you got into doing these, you could also add, um, you could make it a spiral. That top line would be your main line. And then you add these in. You could do something like that. There's spirals in there, and this one also has examples of different ways to use the shading. No matter what you do, this one would be your top line. Spirals around, then you would add your edges in, just like we talked about, and then adding the bottom. It would be parallel to the top, so this one curved that way, this one curves that way as well. Then paying attention to all these other curves to help add dimension. You could even make it split off if you want to. So those are some different ways to use geometrical shapes and shading.